Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm Double Art Angel, and this is the sixth tutorial in my tutorial series. It comes out a little late, I'm sorry for that. But anyway, so today I'm gonna teach you guys my method in using blur tool in different kind of situations. We make this one artwork Mad Max themed, I guess you can call it. I'm showing you guys how you make things look like they are going faster and rotating and so on. So if you like this kind of content, don't forget to like and subscribe, hit that thumbs up, comment down below what you think and what you want me to teach next and so on. And let's get right to the tutorial. First of all, I have made this Mad Max landscape and uh, this one is for the blur to tool. So let's start by picking up here in the filters and down underneath blur, we have blur tool. So I can just press blur and now it's a little blurred out. I want to make a mirage effect because I think it's quite hot here and you find this underneath the blur gallery so tilt shift blur tool and we're gonna just pick this eye over here blur it more and take away the light range a little and a little okay and it gives a highlighted edge on on the top of the ship and a little darkness on the on underneath so now i also want to blur this more and then we can simply guys just go to the most normal blur menu and use blur more and for the last blur for for an environment is on, underneath blur gallery and that's field blur so i'm gonna purposely blur this out so we don't focus on it and then I'm also gonna blur out these rocks. You can basically take by holding Alt key and dragging the blur ga gallery to the second layer. We add the exact same effect to that one. And, and then I'm also gonna add the blur tool, blur gallery tool to this picture. And then I'm also gonna blur this one out by adding a field blur. Now we have the same same blurriness and I think it's okay. Now the good thing with blur gallery tool is that you can jump into it by double clicking the blur ga gallery and then you can just change the values, change the blur effect, the pixel amount in the tool itself. You don't need to redo anything. You just go back and do that. I'm gonna do it with this one also. Now we make the objects smart objects always before we're blurring. And now I did just the same thing. I just alt dragged the blur tool. Okay, that's the first blur tools. The, se the second blur tool are, that I use are in motion. And um, we have uh, this setting here that is very cha chaotic. And um, I want motion on this part over here because this this engine is vibrating a little and uh, this, um, I think it's rubber uh, strap is also moving. So the engine should have a little movement. And I'm gonna do this by uh, selecting the parts that I want to move. It's basically the engine, right? So, And now when we have this engine selected, underneath blur menu, we have motion blur. And I'm gonna give this a motion that is subtle, but still noticeable. And to get this picture to not be, start to be too uh, noisy, I'm just gonna mask away a little from the mid that I know that is steadfast on this engine. So stuff that won't be moving that much. Okay, guys, so 
This is a little jump, but uh, I'm in the middle of making motion blur for my boss buggy. And one thing is need to take in consideration when making motion blur is in which way the vibration will work. So for example, these valves, engine valves that we have over here, they will move up and down, but not much sideways, right? So let's take this layer and use the underneath the blur menu, the motion blur. And and we have this angle over here and I can check with the preview that I get the right motion in it so I, I want it to be 79 and uh, the angle because then it will look like it's jumping up and down and the distance is 10 now and I think it's fine uh, so what I have done now is also use the same exact same uh, motion blur effect on this dude's legs right so let's check that we have his legs first selected and never mind the selections they they aren't relevant right now but this guy's legs will be vibrating in a similar way that the valves exhaust valves so you do this by pressing alt by holding alt and pressing ctrl and f then you add the same blur effect to that part that you just used and this is a shortcut. Uh, next up we have his hands. Now these are different so we will use a new blur and that you need to take from the uh, blur menu. So motion blur and the angle is about the same so I'm gonna change it to 80 something maybe even 90. 90 is straight up and down of course and 86 looks good I think and and uh, the distance can be between 5 and 10 pixels, it shouldn't be that much. Because if you add like a lot of pixels, then you also add a lot of motion. This motion is subtle, but it's still there. So that's what I'm making with these effects, the vibration, so like that. And to bring down the subtlety, instead of going back to the blur gallery and start to change in in the actual values, you just mask out this, this part that you don't want to be vibrating so hard. So his hands, for example, he will have a firm grip of his weapon. So even though the blades will be vibrating, his palms won't that much probably and that's what i have done with exactly all of the elements that i want to be moving and this is also how you make stuff look like it's rotating and so on we come to that soon okay guys so one thing to think about when i came to this part of this picture still before we go to the next blur tool is using this technique is base the base of it are motion right so a motion by vibration and vibration will be happening to stuff that is loose or doesn't weigh that much or doesn't have a solid uh, foundation. So for example this pipe over here will be vibrating quite a lot because it's loose from the rest of the structure. But the key thing here is to use masking tool and mask away the part that is not vibrating and that's this foundation of this pipe. So I will take away the vibration from the place that definitely aren't vibrating. So this pipe over here, it's loose from everything. So it will probably vibrate all, of, all the way. But just to keep the picture in focus, we take a little away from the mid, not much, just, just a little. Okay, so let's go to the next blur tool. Okay, so the next blur that I will go through is path blur. I'm gonna show principles in, in path blur. So I copied this boss buggy three times and now I want it to look like it's, com it's driving really fast from uh, the horizon here where it is now. So I'm gonna use this copy that I have underneath the actual layer and add from the blur gallery the path blur option. We have it as, as a centered blur and uh, edit blur shapes we will do that later on. Start by adding the motion to the blur and we want the blur to be behind so that's why the arrow also is behind the object. I'm gonna add the second, second path and even a third 
I usually use three arrows when I make these straight, fast blur effects like this. And now we can add the speed a little to about 775 and edit blur shapes. And now when we edit the blur shape, we can drag out how much we want it to blur uh, behind and also how where it starts. So how strong the blur is in the start. And that's what I'm doing right now. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna focus the area in the start and blur it out in the end. And that's how we make it look like it's going fast. Now the wheels are still on place, but we'll come to that later. And when we are done, we're going to the upper layer and do the same thing. We add from the blur gallery a path blur. Now I'm not gonna edit the blur shapes yet. And we're gonna add again a path. Here we don't need more than one or two. And this is the blur that, that will be visible on the vehicle. Now it blurs out exactly everything, right? And this is why now I'm gonna mask off everything that we just added and bring it back uh, on certain places pretty randomly but in places where I know that it, it, it doesn't matter if they're out of focus. The next blur that we will go to is the spin blur. Uh, now this one works also in the same way. We're gonna add, add a copy from the original layer of the area that we want to spin. So I'm gonna take the pen tool and select this tire over here. Doesn't need to be perfect. We're gonna make, select this and copy it and bring it on f in front of everything and then we're gonna go to the blur gallery again and spin blur. Now we get this indicator here in the middle that we can move to the place where we want the motion to be. Uh, and these side things decide how round the motion is. So a wheel is round, right? So we want the spinning to be round, but we also want it to be on the outer rim of the wheel. Now it also already looks quite good. We could add a little more speed to it. We are masking it out and bring back the mask or the blur on the wheel just a hint on the also on the rim like that so now we have a spinning wheel okay guys so we come to the second to last blur tool i'm gonna show how i'm using it most of the time and it's the gaussian blur and we use it to make shadows uh, uh, in a simple way and move the shadow underneath and um, this is gonna be the subject shadow uh, or it's gonna be on the ground but quite close to the actual subject uh, we have the light source above here now we're going to filters blur gaussian blur gaussian blur makes the object that you are blurring its edges distorted or the pixels distorted so we have this ratio over here and preview can we can see that if we add too much it blurs out the edge and we don't want it too much because shadow should be quite sharp but still a little blurred and that's the second to last blur tool that we're gonna use Okay, so this tutorial starts to be in the end and uh, we have come a long way. I still have stuff to finish this off and I will in a time lapse after this. But the last blur tool that I will be going through is the field blur and uh, 
it can be used on the over overall picture. I may be using it still on the overall picture also to uh, decide where the focus point in the picture is. Uh, this is based basically on when you use a camera with the lens. You can change with the camera lens when you take a photograph the focus point uh, of the photo and with this you get a depth of field and that's what we are trying to do now. We already have some depth of field with the help of value change making the values lighter in the background, dark in the foreground especially now when we have a sunset going on. Anyway we go to the, the last but not least blur tool being the field of view and not to break the original layer made it a smart object then you go to filter and underneath blur gallery you find field blur that's what we're gonna change and now we have this dial over here that is deciding where the focus is gonna be in the picture we will have the main subject over here right so we want the background to be blurry and I think this is a little too much so I'm gonna bring it down to like 10 pixels or so and now I'm only blurring the background so I'm not blurring the whole thing I'm only blurring the background so to decide what part of the picture is more blurry and make a so-called depth of field you can add these points and also in the end when we are ready on the final artwork we may be adding still more of this field blur anyway that's all of the blur techniques that i use in this tutorial i will do the rest of this artwork in a time lapse uh, finish it off adding overlays etc but i thank you again and let's go to the time lapse